Here we are in the banks of the Jordan River in Israel where so much took place. Not some other place, but with this very river right here that's flowing in front of you. And we remember from the Old Testament, remember the water split for Joshua and the Hebrew people as they made their way into the Promised Land. You remember that? Some have said, well, was that a miracle? Was that a natural thing? Did it really happen? Well, we believe it was a miracle. We know that in 1927 there was an earthquake, uh, and that earthquake collapsed, a 150-foot cliff that fell into the Jordan, and the flow of the Jordan was completely stopped for 21 hours. Did that kind of thing happen during the time of Jericho? Well, we know that during the time of Jericho there was a massive earthquake in this area of the world. Perhaps that was all coordinated and uh, planned by God. We don't know, but this very Jordan that you see before you divided as the Hebrew people made their way across. In the New Testament, the Jordan River takes a very special place in the life of Jesus. The Gospel of Mark begins and ends with the imagery of baptism from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, he will prepare the way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight his paths. And so John came baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins, and they were baptized by him, where? In the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey, and this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus of Nazareth in Galilee was baptized by John in where? In the Jordan River. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Not some other river, this river, this one right here. Mark also concludes his gospel with this admonition, warning, encouragement for us all. From Mark 16, 16, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And friends, we're here this afternoon, you know, not to re-baptize. We believe that baptism is a sign of the grace of God, grace that we don't earn, we simply receive. In fact, that's the difference between John's baptism and the baptism of Jesus. John said you need to be baptized in order to get ready for what Je that Jesus is coming. Get baptized so you can get ready. Jesus came and baptism changed in a sense that we can now live the life that uh, we're called to live because Jesus is here. And our baptism today is a uh, rebaptism or, or dedication or remembrance of baptism today is an opportunity for us to remember the grace of God and to remember our place in the family of God. You belong to God. Did you know that? Would you say that with me? I belong to God. Say it one more time. I belong to God. And as you remember your baptism today, I want you to remember that you belong to the Lord. And what a special thing for us to be gathered here at the table where the Lord Jesus Christ, the very river where the Lord Jesus Christ Himself was baptized 2,000 years ago. And as we go in the water, we remember the grace of God washing over us. As we come out of the water, we remember the new life that Christ has promised to each of us who believe and will walk in His way. Amen? Amen. Amen.